Hello, hello everybody, this is Marisol with Microbleeding Hub and today I am bringing you some very special content. If you are new in the microbleeding and PMU industry, then you have to listen up because this is probably something that you're interested in. I'm bringing you an interview with Vanessa Gomez from Van Gogh Beauty Bar and she's gonna tell us all about how she went from making $40,000 a year at a very boring job that she hated in retail to making over 130 grand her first year microplating. Does this sound crazy? It's not, because it's totally possible. And if you wanna know how she did it, just stay tuned and let's get to the interview. Okay, hello everybody. Um, this is Microplating Hub and today, we are interviewing a very special lady. We have with us Vanessa Gomez. Hi, Vanessa. Hi. Vanessa is the founder of Van Gogh Beauty Bar, uh, based in Miami and also in Chicago. So Vanessa has agreed to come on uh, and talk to, uh, talk to us today about her story, how she got started with microblading. Um, and uh, basically, she's, she's a great success story. And I brought her on. Um, because I want to illustrate that you can be uh, very successful doing microplating. There, you know, Vanessa said it earlier when we were talking, uh, there is money in brows, right? And what was the other half of that? <laughs> there is money in brows if you, if you, work, if you work hard, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. So um, without further ado, I'm going to um, let Vanessa introduce herself. And um, so... Tell us a little bit about uh, you, Vanessa, kind of just give us the specs and um, tell us how you got into microblading. Vanessa has a very interesting story. Like, I'm just going to throw a few words around here. Like, <laughs> she was in the Air Force. She's done pageants. She worked at a startup that ended up being uh, a floozy. And then she, unemployment, researching jobs. Mac. Okay, so this is a very interesting story that goes from one end to the other with a bunch of ups and downs, but <laughs> it gets her to where she is today with yeah. two locations, working her bum off, and just being very liberated by all of the effort that she's put in. So tell us how you got started, Vanessa, um, in microblading, this yes. whole story. Ooh. Yeah, it's taken some time, but we're here. <laughs> um, so I graduated college 2012 um, here in Chicago, um, where I'm at currently. And I went to school for psychology. And I knew since I was in, I believe, eighth grade, I wanted to do occupational therapy. So um, I, I graduated with my bachelor's in psychology with a focus on occupational therapy. You know, I knew that I had to get my master's afterwards, um, after school, but while I was in college, I joined the Air Force. My family told me, you know, we can't pay for your college, you better figure out something. So the only option really was military since they cover some of your expenses. Um, so because it was just such a demanding, um, you know, activity and, and part of school, I put most of my focus on it because I didn't want to be yelled at in front of everybody, you know, in, in the squad. So um, I ended up not doing so well in school. So I just kind of threw occupation, occupational therapy out the window. And I was like, well, I didn't do well, whatever, I'll find something else to do. So I worked at bars, I bartended and wait, you know, was a waitress. Um, my dad's friend, called him and was like, hey, if Vanessa's looking for a, um, a corporate job, we'd love to bring her on. And I was like, perfect. You know, made some money. It was downtown Chicago. It was great. I was there for a year. We ended up finding out that it was, they weren't doing some, you know, good things or a bit shady. Um, but with that, I was able to have about four months off of work. I was on unemployment. So definitely a down not good time in my life because mm -hmm. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't do well enough in school to continue. Uh, I was like, am I going to be a waitress forever? I, yeah. I just didn't know. So I've always somewhat been naturally good with makeup. Um, so I decided to start getting back into that. And I shadowed some artists here in Chicago and just helped them out and assisted. 
Um, just re some random day I'm on Facebook because I'm always on my social media. I happen to see a status about this girl and she's like, hey, you know, we're hiring at this makeup counter, you know, if anybody's interested. And so I messaged her and I got the information. I went and four interviews later, I got hired with MAC Cosmetics. I never thought literally four months prior I would be working at a makeup counter on Michigan Avenue. Yeah. So literally I got the call and I cried because I'm like, what? Like, it's just crazy how things work out. You know, one thing ends, but it's so something else can start up new. Yeah. So, you know, I started working with Mac. I was there for six months and honestly working at the retail counter, it's a good stepping stone for anybody that's going to get into some type of beauty business. Mm -hmm. You learn client relationships, you learn different skin tones, you learn how to talk to people about their features, how to enhance them. Um, and just all the things that come with building a business, you, you know, you can start and learn there. So I decided to take that to Miami. Um, and so I moved to Miami 2015. I worked at a couple makeup counters. I ended up being a counter manager for NARS Cosmetics. Um, and during that time, uh, I, I started getting my lashes done. And so I, you know, I asked the girl, I'm like, man, she's charging me 150 bucks for these lashes. I'm like, how many people do you do a day? She's like, oh, about six. So I'm just adding up those numbers. I'm like, that sounds like some really good money. Teach me. So I learned, I was able to quit my job three weeks later from, from retail. Um, how I got started though with the clients was just posting on social media, Instagram, doing all of the hashtags in the world of lashes, Miami lashes, this, mm -hmm. you know, and I was doing a discounted rate because I needed pictures and, and things like that. So, um, you know, I got my models, I was doing them literally in my bedroom, in my apartment. Okay. Is, is that's how I started. Um, and then during that time I learned about microblading and I was like, I've had the lightest brows of my life. I've been filling them in since I was 13. I was that girl that did, wouldn't play sports, go swimming because of my eyebrows. Mm -hmm. I went, got them microbladed. I had a terrible botch job, tons of scarring underneath. And I learned from that experience. Oh. I learned what not to do. You right. Know? And so again, that horrible incident, really built me for, for, you know, how I am now with my business. So I decided to take a microblading class or uh, yeah, the course, three day course, I believe of uh, June, 2017, right? So it'd be two years coming up this June. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I, I took the class. I found out that I'm not going to be able to do microblading in my bedroom. You know, so I had to take it seriously. And so I went on Craigslist and I was typed in, you know, microblading rooms for rent, found one, you know, started doing three months at a time, which I think really helped me to calm my anxiety that, okay, if it doesn't work out after three months, you know, it's fine. Yeah. Um, but it was still a commitment. It was still a commitment because you still had a commitment. I was so scared, but you know what? Jumping into it pushed me to continue and it pushed me to work harder. Yeah. And that was your first like entrepreneurial effort. Yes. Yes. Why, why did you, why did you have that craving of doing like, you know, why did you feel like, uh, I'm going to leave my retail job and jump on this thing that could or could not work out? Like how, how did you come to those decisions? I was such a different person. I was so unhappy with retail and I'm telling you, every day I would cry almost before going to work. And I knew that I never wanted to be in that position again. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if you don't want to go back to retail, you have to do this. You have to practice four hours a day. It's microblading is like working out, you know, it's like a muscle. Yeah. If you don't work it out. You're not going to, you're not going to be up to par. So just knowing that I didn't want to go backwards and I've already seen all these different lows, I had to jump in. And I knew, you know what, if after three months it didn't work, it, my life isn't over, you know, but how else will I know if I'm going to be good at it if I didn't just try it? Perfect. Yeah. And so, and Why did so that make you unhappy though? Why did that job make you feel like you didn't want to be? The retail? Yeah. The retail job? It was so slow paced. I was working at Ball Harbor shops. 
Uh huh. You know, so it's a very, it's very uppity and super and high end. Many people go there. It's very high end, and I was bored. I it wasn't jogging my creative side, and that's mm -hmm. what I love. Mm -hmm. I wasn't getting that client, you know, um, interaction because nobody was there ever, and I craved that. And because that wasn't happening, I was becoming really like sad person and mm -hmm. just regretting things. I was starting to really push away from makeup. I stopped wearing makeup because I was sick of it. You know, I just wasn't having good relationships with people. I was resenting moving to Miami. I'm like, this is not me. Nope. This, I have to get out of here. And yeah. it was the best thing I ever did. And although I, you know, started not liking it after a couple years, I, looking back now, it's what I had to do to be where I'm at now. I had to start there and learn exactly. those little skills, you know, before I could even be in business now. And so it just, it's crazy how things all add up. And you had to realize that that wasn't what you wanted to, that, yeah. you know, being, uh, being unemployed necessarily didn't satisfy your creativeness because if, yes. you know, I, I've noticed that for people who want to do this, there's like, uh, a defining thing, if there's one defining thing, it has to be that you just need to be constantly stimulated, you know, yes. and like, and, and when you are an entrepreneur, it's such a, it's such a like crazy ride. You don't know what's going to happen. And maybe <laughs> yes. the fact that you don't know what's going to happen is more stimulating and I guess more fun than knowing that at the end of the month you have you know, a five or $3,000 paycheck waiting yeah. for you, right? Yeah. Like you, you can't settle for just knowing. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> very, really very true. Be all up in it and be working and, and mm -hmm. having that hustle. It's exciting. It is exciting. The first, you know, few months was, was tough, definitely, because, you know, trying to find models. I'm also trying to advance my skill. I'm, you know, like, oh my gosh, how am I going to pay this month's rent? And how am I going to do this? And at this but, point, you were only doing lashes, right? Um, yeah, I was only doing lashes. I was doing, I worked for, also for a company called Glam Squad, which is Uber for makeup artists. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I was getting, you know, $60 an hour doing, doing that. So it helped pay bills and stuff. But, you know, I definitely was living kind of paycheck to paycheck and just hoping um, clients would come my way. What what really, really helped me was I dove right in after taking the training. I mean, I posted on Instagram three times a day saying, I'm looking for models. You know, I ended up doing 20 models in a week. Wow. Probably only like a, a few weeks after taking my, my microblading course. Yeah. And that was all from Instagram? All from Instagram. Yeah. All from Facebook, just posting in my statuses. Um, you know, growing up, I went to 13 different schools. So I have so many different friends from all over that mm -hmm. just know people. And, you know, they were reposting for me. I would have my family repost for me. I even posted on Craigslist, like looking for micro, micro mm -hmm. models. And I'm getting 20 models. And was it smart? I was like, looking back, I'm like, I can't believe I did 20 people only three weeks after taking a micro course. But that was the jump start. I was like, I have to, I have to learn different skin textures and tones and the warmth and the cool of, you know, of the skin. And they knew they were models. I wasn't charging them a lot of money. I was just charging them a product fee. And did they come back? Some of them did, some didn't, but at least I had pictures and that's, that's the money right there. People yeah. want to see the befores and afters. You can talk all day long about how you do brows, but it's all visual. Right. If you have nothing to show for it, it didn't happen. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, with teaching, I tell, you know, students of mine, I'm like, social media and pictures are your number one sellers. If you don't do any of those, you will not be successful in this business. Mm -hmm. That's it. So I'm like, I had some students that are like, I don't want to make flyers. I'm like, Why would you want to make flyers? Where are you going to put them? I'm like, you know, maybe make flyers for if you go to the gym make them specifically, you know, for strategically the gym or, placed. Yeah. Strategically placed, but they were like, Oh, we're going to go post it on the sign. I'm like, no, social media connects you to people that you don't know. And it's the best. 
it's mm -hmm. free. And who <laughs> are looking for that too, because when you post, you know, a, a hashtag microblading Miami, um, anyone that's exploring that hashtag clicked on it because they, they're interested in it. So you know yes. that, you know, it's, it's a, it's a more, I guess it's a more interested potential buyer than anyone who just sees sure. a flyer walking past it. Right. Definitely. Definitely. So yeah, I, I was part of like a kickboxing gym and I was like, you know, let me make something specific for them, for those women and give them a discounted rate. And that helped me bring in clients too. And then they tell their friends. And so then they start coming and it's just this, you know, spiral effect. And I think that's been one of the big things for me having a good amount of clients whenever I, whenever I come to Chicago, just that word of mouth. Although I may only work about two weeks a month, which is kind of how I set it up when I'm in Miami. Um, it's probably about a week and a half that I open up my schedule for those clients. And I do, you know, four or five people. When I come to Chicago, I do about 25 to 30 and that's touch-ups and new clients. And then I vacation for the other two weeks. And okay. So you're living the dream now. You're, <laughs> you're working, you're, you're not working um, 40 hours a week, probably. Right. Physically. No. Right. You know, social media. Social yeah. media. <laughs> yeah. But so you're probably, I, I think it might be fair to say, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it might be fair to say that now you're working less than you ever had before physically. Um, and you are making more than you had right. ever made before. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's, that's great. Yes. I <laughs> found it. <laughs> and you're finding time also to just enjoy life. You know, you're, you're going out with your friends, you're traveling, you went to Vegas, you, um, you know, you're just having fun living yeah. the life. Yes. Yes. Microblading definitely gave me that freedom, you know, to, to live how I want. I can make as much money as I want one month or I can make as little as I want. Um, but what doesn't ever stop is the, um, just the, the behind the scenes type mm -hmm. work. And I think, you know, people kind of, you know, have a little bit misconception where they're like, oh, you know, she does these brows and this, and then she's going all the way over here. But even when I was in Israel, I was still answering clients. I booked three clients while I was in Israel, you know, for the following month. So I'm yeah. still doing all of that back behind the, behind the scenes stuff, making sure that I'm responding to emails, following up with people who have been interested and see, you know, what, what is stopping them. Um, so you definitely have to be in it all the time. You have to have your phone close by, you know, uh, just really marketing yourself and, and building those client relationships and following up really has helped mm -hmm. so um yeah <laughs> about how many people are you doing a day um like when you're in when you're in Miami it's one thing and when you're in Chicago it's another so Vanessa goes she's based in Miami but about once a month she goes to back to Chicago to teach and also do a bunch of clients there because she's very requested because you know, a lot of people know you there right yes so yeah. Um, most of the time you're in Miami, but, um, when you're in Miami, you're working less. Yes. When I'm, in, when I'm in Miami, I'm working a bit less. Um, I feel because, you know, I'm, it's just me there. I don't have any family. I do have friends now. Um, but your family and your friends are really going to be like the big kickers behind, you know, when you start your business, because you need them to be your, your walking models. You need, you need to do their brows and let them tell their friends and yeah. have them post your stuff. So because I don't have family in Miami, it's a little bit slower for me. I really rely on the social media mm -hmm. um, in that city. The hashtags are super important. Um, so I would say I probably do three clients a week mm -hmm. out there. But then when I'm not physically working, I'm on the computer, I'm ordering new supplies, I'm testing out new products, I'm putting all of my content together, putting my pictures from Chicago, you know, and posting those. You're um, educating yeah, so yourself as well, as you mentioned, you were taking uh, yep. more classes. Mm -hmm. Researching people that, you know, I like their technique and, and just watch their videos. Just constantly, you know, on YouTube or um, 
on Instagram, just mm -hmm. learning and just updating myself, seeing what's new. I, you know, I learned about this whole micro shading. I'm like, that looks interesting. I'm going to take a class in that. Took it and it's the best thing I've ever done too, because now so many people want it. It's just staying ahead. And the only way I can really stay ahead is, is the social media mm -hmm. and see what's trending. So, um, you know, some of the classes I do want to take are abroad. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, okay, when are those classes? They're going to be in Europe. You know, is that a business expense? Yes, it is. It's just, you have to spend money to make money. You know, I, I, my income has definitely increased, um, significantly, significantly, but still have my expenses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's been sort of building up. So the more money that I was making, you know, I would then turn around and invest that into the products, maybe order better blades or just things like that. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. Yeah. And so when you're in Chicago, it's hustle, hustle, hustle all the time. Yes. Okay. So yeah, in Chicago, I, I planned that a month ahead of time. So I'm already booking for April. Um, I book myself out probably five to six clients a day. And that's mm -hmm. a mixture of new and touch up. So I'll probably do two or three touch ups and then mix in maybe two new clients, two to three new clients in there. And so um, I teach Friday to Monday, I teach four days. And then Tuesday to Sunday is when I do my clients. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so you yeah, about five clients a day. And then yeah. I charge. 400 for the microblading that includes the touch-up as yeah. well okay. and then 475 for the ombre and the powder technique and then the combination is the microblading in the front and the machine in the end that's yeah 500 so my area for chicago is way less saturated than miami and because yeah. i know that um you know, I, I try not to have my prices way too high. I know this is a city that they have money and they can pay for that, but I don't feel comfortable charging somebody almost their rent. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I do want it to be affordable. You know, if I'm doing five clients a day at that price, I'm definitely making my money. You mm -hmm. know, I don't, I don't need to charge the 700, 800 that people are charging. Um, and so that's honestly how I stay busy. Uh, referrals, you know, incentives for people. I talk to them while they're getting their brows done. They're like, oh my gosh, you know, my sister would totally love to do this. I'm like, if you get your sister and her girlfriend to come, your touch-up is free. You know, your, your yearly touch-up is free. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh yeah, that's so easy. They're gonna, they're gonna love this. So that pushes them to start telling their friends and then get them booked for the next month. Yeah. So really always trying to push it like, oh, what did your husband think? What does your best friend think? What does your mom think? You know, I'll text them a couple of days later. Oh, everybody loved it. I got to get my mom in there. Yes. Bring her at your touch up. We'll do her brows then. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just getting them excited as well. Yeah. And so, um, you know, with all of this, it, it kind of works out the, the pace of it, right? Because if, if you kind of had the same rhythm that you, the, in Miami, then you do in, um, in, in Chicago, you probably wouldn't have time to, you know, um, you know, learn all these new techniques and do all of the admin work because it is a lot of, um, back, you know, behind the scenes. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's all of that posting and taking the pictures and finding the hashtags and all that. Yes. Um, so if you had, if you had to pinpoint the, you know, the one thing that has been, um, absolutely crucial for you to have the amount of work and the amount of income that you have now, um, as far as marketing your business, uh, what would that be? The social media, mm -hmm. um, social media, ha social media has been so crucial with my business because microblading is a visual, visual, you know, thing. Everybody wants to see the befores and afters. You know, you can talk that you've been trained, you have 10 certificates from here and there, but if your visual work isn't good, nobody cares <laughs> where you learned and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, a lot of people message me like, Oh, what are your prices? You know, and I want, the, and I don't want to just send them to my website, go book on my website. I want to have a conversation with the client. That you know? is key. What you've just said. It's yes. so key. Yes. 
So my, I mean, my DMs are definitely filled and you know, it is tough to manage, but my phone is in my, I bought an Apple watch because I want to be on top of it. The moment a client messages me, I need to message back. Yeah. I can't be like, Oh, I'm out with my friends. I, I will be Even if you're in Israel, <laughs> even if I'm in Israel. Yeah. I booked three clients while I was in Israel. You know, it was midnight over there, but it's daytime over here and I'm on it. I have to get them booked. Um, I see a lot of people are like in their Instagram bios, like no DMs. Why wouldn't you want to have a conversation with your client? These clients are scared. First off, they're getting a yeah. tattoo on their face. They want to feel comforted. They want to know that the artist that they're choosing is involved and really cares what they're doing and not just doing it for the money. You right. know? And so when they message me, I'm like, Oh my gosh. They're like, I'm so scared. I'm like, why? Like, you're going to wish that you did it sooner, you know, and just getting them prepped and tell yeah, them you're like a girlfriend. Yes. You know, I, I, my clients are my, my clients are friends of mine. Like I hang out with them apart from doing their brows because mm -hmm. we just get that connection. Yeah. Um, and if you and were I, to and send I want them that. off to your website, you know, they'd go to your website, um, they'd see a list of prices. Sure. They'd know how much it is, but, um, mm -hmm. I don't think that they really care so much about the price as they care about having the recon, you know, the, the, the yes. comforting friend that's going to, you know, just be look a out for them. calming yeah. voice and look out for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I want my, that's my biggest thing too, you know, because I, I was in a situation where. You know, I was that new client that was going to get her brows done and I didn't feel that connection with them. And I was scared. I was like shaking and, you know, and they didn't do a good job. They just didn't care. And that's what made me upset. It wasn't about the money. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I definitely agree. You know, they want to feel like, okay, I'm, I'm excited because she's so excited. I always message. I'm like, I'm so excited for you. Like you don't understand. And I tell my clients, I'm like, if, if I didn't have bills to pay, I would still do this because I've met some amazing women, you know, I've seen them cry because just from getting eyebrows done, they have given me so much advice, you know, because these women are, are all from different demographics and, and you know, things like that. I, I get blondes and I get African American and I get my Spanish people in Miami. I, I have become so versatile going back and forth, mm -hmm. you know, between these two cities. and. You know, I do have girls that reach out to me and they're like, oh my God, Vanessa, how do you go back and forth? I'm like, go to some city and link up with other artists, you know, go rent, you know, from their, their studio for a couple of days and start doing the hashtags, tagging people, you know, link up with them. We have to yeah. all be connected. And, yeah. you know, this industry, I don't know, like sometimes I'm like, why, like, how am I doing this? Because I see the Facebook groups um i won't name certain ones but you know it's just so catty and people don't want to help each other so i try to just stay in my lane and i go between my two cities and i just am here for my clients mm -hmm. but I'm, i i need to be their friend and and look out for them so and you could have you know you could have stayed uh 100 of the time in chicago but you had a dream that you wanted to live in Miami ever since you you were a kid you pictured you yes. know the palm trees and the beach yes. you mm -hmm. wanted the Miami lifestyle and you went and you yes. you you did it like it's I I think it's I think people don't often don't realize like the guts that that takes you know you don't know anyone in a new city um it's completely new you don't know the city and it takes like it takes a lot of guts to um i guess step out of your comfort zone in search of what you've always wanted like yes yeah. you've always wanted it but it it's still yeah. kind of scary to get to that point it is scary um it's so funny because people are like oh my gosh you live in miami by yourself and you know why would you go down there it's just i i maybe that's in me you know what jumping into this business but i Yes, I crave the unknown, although sometimes I get like bad anxiety, but I know it's only going to get better if I put in the effort. That's that it's only going to fall down on me. And, you know, I, I knew, yes, like you said, since I was a kid, my, my room was Florida theme. I had the beaches and I was like, when I moved to Florida, I want a palm tree outside of my, my window. And I went for it. And, <laughs> and I was like, okay, I got my <clears throat> like, but I'm like, I'm, I, I'll get it. And I'll be like, okay, what's next? Like, we got to do something else. We got to yeah. keep it going. And so starting off, you have to have that momentum. 
and you know, I do have a lot of students and I, I tell them, I'm like, I know you want to stop. I know you're scared. You have to keep pushing. I'm like, look, my life has literally changed in a year and a half. I was never able to spend Christmas here in Chicago for about, not, I shouldn't say never. When I was in Florida or when I'm in Florida, um, I couldn't come home for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And now with this, with this business, I can come home for, for the holidays finally and also work you know, but it definitely took pushing myself to be like, you know what, let's take this business to Chicago too. People know me there, you know, let's, let's amp it up. Um, and so I just think, you know, if, if there's a city that you want to move to do it, sell your stuff, sell your furniture and just go. Essentially you, know? you can be, you can be successful with microplating, even if you are in a very saturated market. Um, Definitely. it just really depends on you. It's, and yeah, people, people care about the person, you know, the personality. It's, so it's, basically it's like, like the two keys right here that I'm getting from you for mm -hmm. anyone that's watching this is, um, you know, hustle, 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 um, with social media. So that would be Instagram primarily, uh, secondarily, um, Facebook, right. Mm -hmm. um, and then also pay really close attention to client relations. You know, don't, you know, personalize the entire experience. Don't send someone over to your website. They, they can get the prices from there, but you can tell them yourself and you can take that extra step to also have a conversation with them. And there's something, there's something here for the algorithm as well. Um, Instagram will make a note of who you, who you message and so if you recently had someone message you, um, they remember that you had an interaction. And so whenever you have a story update or whenever you have a new post, they are going to see those first because they recently interacted with you. So Ooh. this is, this is, you know, you don't, you, you might or may, you may or may not know this, but like, because you're doing it, that's probably the, like the factual reason why people are sticking through it. And also because they enjoy Ooh. talking to you. So yeah. there, is, there, are, there are two reasons behind why you want to talk to people. DMing is like getting a bunch of engagement points with someone on Facebook. Uh, at Facebook and Instagram, they will remember, the algorithm remembers any sort of connection that you have with this person, any sort of interaction. Um, and so, and then let's talk about um, then how much you're you're making right now i i mm -hmm. i i don't i'm kind of um i don't really want to talk too much about the numbers but i know that everyone that uh comes into this industry is of course interested in the numbers um it's not just because i mean you can't come into this industry just because you're interested in making money that's definitely not going to work you definitely have to have some sort of uh passion and you need to be sort of good at what you're doing you know you would always you're always good at makeup um, but, um, but it's something that people always think about, right? Even if you were to go to college, you look at how much does a psychologist make, how much, you know, I looked at this, how much do journalists make? And it's just to have an idea. So yeah. when you were going into microbleeding, what was your financial goal? So when I first started, I really wasn't sure. <laughs> I, I, that's the bad thing is, I guess I don't really have specific goals I just know that I want to be really good and I have to do everything to get there and you know when I first started I did those 20 models after my my course and I was charging $150 or no I'm sorry $100 so I did 20 clients that's $2,000 I was like wow I just did $2,000 in a week anything was better than making $20 an hour in retail so mm -hmm. I was already happy and you know, I was able ready to pay off more than half of my class, which really amped me up. I was like, mm -hmm. wow, this is doable. You know, you just have to remember that, okay, although yes, now I can make $400 in an hour, still making $50 or $100 in an hour and a half, two hours, whatever it is, is still better than most people's jobs. Mm -hmm. you, know, yeah. you, you know, maybe like retail or waitress and things like that. So Yes, again, not focusing on the money, but focusing on, on the skill itself. 
that will eventually be able to bump it up to about 250 is what mm -hmm. I did. So maybe around the three month mark, I was doing about 250. So my first six months of microblading, I was probably averaging around $3,000, $4,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And physically actually working was probably only, I don't know, uh, 24, maybe 20 hours. Mm -hmm. So to work 20 hours a week in a whole month. Oh, in a whole month. Okay. Yeah. In ah. a whole month. In a whole month. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. <laughs> crazy. Like actually physically doing clients. Cause I would do about, I would only take about an hour and a half. Right. So, you know, actually physically working only about 20 hours and still able to make how much I was making from retail. That was, you know, um, what's the word that was satisfying for me. Mm -hmm. like, wow. Okay. I can make what I used to make in retail, but I'm working way less amount of time. So, um, that was good enough for me. What really changed my, um, my income was coming back and forth from Chicago. So when I, when I, after the six months, I started coming to Chicago and I was doing maybe 50, it was actually like about 10 or 15 clients while I was coming to my, to Chicago. And I was here for about four or five days, mm -hmm. just in those five days. And you weren't teaching at this point. And I wasn't even teaching. Mm -hmm. So let's say I was charging about 250 or $300 and times that by 15. I don't know. I don't know math. Um, you know, I was pulling in those four or five days, a few grand. Mm -hmm. And that was perfect for me. I was like, okay, now I can work. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, about three, $4,000. And that was days. only in four or five days, four or five days. Like blown out of the water. I was like, Oh my gosh. Okay. Like this is good. And then I can still go back to Miami and, you know, still continue to build up that clientele out there since it's a bit more saturated mm -hmm. um, and do all of my behind the scenes work. Right. So then I had a lot of people ask me, Oh, Vanessa, I really want to learn from you. I like that your work is a bit more natural than some you know, things that I've seen. And I was really like, no, no, I'm not ready to teach. I, I don't even have, I'm not a teacher. I don't know how to do any of that. So I actually reached out to the company I trained with and I was like, Hey, I have a decent amount of following in Chicago. You know, are you looking for a trainer? And they're like, no, we're not looking I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. There's a lot of things that I've learned in my first, you know, eight months. Um, and I'm passionate about this. And I know that there's people out there that are, are training and I'm like, I don't know how they are, but I know that I'm, I'm a person that I really care again about that client relationship. And I knew that I would have their backs, you mm -hmm. know? And so I decided to start training and it has been amazing. So I was able to, in the six months, probably did about $20,000. That wasn't too bad. Not bad at all. Not bad. So from last January, uh, January 2018 to December 2018, with a combination of actually working and doing brows um, and teaching, I was able to do $130,000 for the year. Oh, oh my God. Woo -hoo! <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Good job. Yeah, girl. Wow. Like it was a crazy year. But I went from making forty thousand dollars in retail to what that's you know, not tripling, but yeah, I, I was able to double that. Yeah. And, and working less, you know. And working way less and and enjoying traveling and enjoying my family and just finally feeling free. And I mean, it wasn't easy, obviously, but it takes a lot of behind the scenes work. And if there's anything that I that I tell my students is like, don't think that you're going to come in here and start charging 400 and something, you know, dollars right away. I'm like, this takes a lot of building, it takes a lot of trust. It takes, you know, a lot of personal research, you know, mm -hmm. being on social media all the time and looking at new techniques and seeing who's doing what and learning from different, you know, artists and just staying up to date, staying connected with, with, your old, you know, clients, but also pushing them to do some of the work for you. 
and having them bring their friends in at touch up. You know, I see a lot of in the bios, like no friends and family allowed and, and no this and that. I'm like, why wouldn't, this is such a scary service for some people. They feel comforted when they bring their sister. Yeah. Bring your sister and bring your mom. Cause I promise we'll get her both eyebrows the next time, you know? Yeah. That, that like you have, of course they sit in the waiting area, but you want to build that relationship with them, you know? And it's fun. It's kind of like just a girl's day, you know, we'll all talk and, and get them comfortable. And they're like, Vanessa, I have to come see you next month. I'm like, perfect. Totally. You know? So, um, so yeah, so I'm able now to, you know, come to Chicago, work for about 10 days. I can do probably like 10,000 to $15,000 for the week mm -hmm. in a half, or the 10 days. And then I'm able to go to Miami and do all the back end work, but then still enjoy my life and travel. And so, now just with having last year i'm doing my goal for this year is a lot more travel because you know i had such a crazy last year and i'm kind of pulling back a little bit with the teaching because i do want to focus on advancing myself and maybe doing some different things that will be easier on myself mm -hmm. uh, for the business so like what you know, um trade like actual like with you i would love to do you know, learning more about, like you said, the algorithms and, 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 you know, things with marketing, things that will just make it easier for me because although I can have 30 conversations in Instagram and talking with clients, I love that, but it's still a lot on me. Yeah. You know? So you want to work sure smarter. I, I want to work <laughs> smarter. Like I, I've been good, you know, I'm working smarter now. And, and You've been working smart. Yeah. Right. Smart, but when, right. Working smarter. Yeah. Right. Work smarter. Work smarter kind of just means like, you know, make the same amount of money, but uh, without um, half as much of uh, the hustle because you also have to be on all the time, you know. So yeah. an easy an easy solution for where you are at right now is I would, you know, I would suggest hiring a, hiring a, a virtual assistant. Um, it could, you know, a lot of people in microblading get so busy. Um, they don't have time for anything else. You know, they kind of want to take a step back, but they're not ready to do that um, and sacrifice their income or their client yeah. relations. So yeah, it's, it's a common, it's a common thing to, to yes. be that busy and feel like, ah, yeah. Cause although like, like I, that's why I say like physically working. Okay. It's not a lot, but then I'm always on somebody's messaging me at 7am and I, you know, I happen to hear it. Like I'm going to answer cause it will just drive me insane if I know that it's there. And I'm right. not responding. So, you know, I, I, I tell students, I'm like, you need to be on it. If, if you want to make this money, you have to put in the work mm -hmm. and it's a lot of work. And you know, if you know, you're on a trip with your family, it's like, don't think that you're really on a trip. You need to make sure that you're responding and, and, you know, being invested in, in yeah. You can't have the luxury of completely disconnecting just yet. You know, you gotta, yeah. you gotta work, uh, work harder than you ever have. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to get to that point where you can Definitely. disconnect. So yeah. going forward, uh, Vanessa, I love your success story. It's, it's, it's so motivating. Like I I'm totally pumped. <laughs> <laughs> so going to realize some things I'm like, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it feels good, you know, to, to talk about your your success and your your story, the path that, that it, you know, the hard work that it took to get to where you are. It's also good to, you know, talk about it because sometimes we forget. And yeah. so, like, when we hear about it, we're like, oh, hey, I, have to, I haven't done so bad. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, okay, I will enjoy that trip. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Pat yourself in the back. You've done really well. Um, going forward, uh, you know, we were kind of talking about that uh, just now. What, what do you um, want for your business in, I guess, this year and the following years? Oh, I've been actually thinking about that recently. Um, I took my first solo trip last month to Israel and it, and it had me reflecting a lot because this business has really pushed me to, um, yeah, reflect on myself. And, you know, with opening up the new studio here in Chicago, um, back in November, you know, I thought that was something that I wanted and I like it. I love having my, my own studio, but it's lonely. 
you know, mm -hmm. and this business is lonely, you know, cause I don't have coworkers, things like that. Um, so what I realized is like, I want to have a little, you know, girl group going on in the studio. I want to bring out a couple people to work with me, not for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not a boss type person. I don't like being over people, but I do. You're like in, in the people. trenches. <laughs> yeah. I like, I want, I want, you know, them to rent from me, um, a couple booths and like, you know, build up their clientele, but use me to, as a, you know, somebody to fall back on and, and get that motivation. And, you know, I've had a few students that will come to the shop and, you know, do some of their models and it's great. Just the energy is so good. We have music going. So my goal is to have a few people working with me at the studio and just making it fun. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I definitely was hustling last year and doing five people a day, but I do maybe want to do just three people a day, you know, um, have things run a bit more smooth um, for me is, is the goal. Um, because I mean, I definitely know that I can work, work, work and make a lot of money, but it's so, it's still so stressful on me. And it's not sustainable either. You can't do that yes. forever. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. But the re the, you know, the, it's good that you, um, that you're considering expanding and everything because, um, a lot of people will jump into microblading and do it for like a year or two, three, and then they'll kind of get tired of it or they, you know, they, they won't want to continue. And I, I kind of wanted to mention that because, um, it's not, it's not something that you, that you can just, you know, that that is not long term. It's it, this is a career, and you could do it for the next 30, 40 years, just as much as you could, you know, be a psychologist for thirty years. Okay. So if you take it seriously, and um, you know, you you have this entrepreneurial spirit, you mm -hmm. definitely could take it to a point where you could get to higher comforts than you could just being um, an employee, um, okay. and you know, being being your own boss is those those advantages. Definitely. And like with students, you know, they, they, even me, I mean, I only started this, it'll be two years in June. It's crazy. You've come and such a long way. <laughs> yeah. Things can change so fast, but if there's any sort of like advice that I would give myself back then when I first started is, yeah, that thing that you're scared of, you have to jump into it. You know, if, when you, if, you know, people that are watching, you know, you just took your microblading course, you know, find a place to, to work out of and sort of learn the business, like go to a tattoo shop and kind of see how they're running things and, um, you know, rent a room and do things right because it will push you even more to, to expand yourself and your business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was definitely scared to rent, you know, commit to a three month lease on renting a room, but it was the best thing that I did because it pushed me to be on social media more and hustling to find those clients to pay that rent. Yeah. You know, if I didn't do that rent then you had that pressure. Been, yeah. You have that pressure. And I, and, and I always put that pressure on myself because it makes me work harder mm -hmm. and it makes me, you know, level up. And, you know, back in November, I was, you know, renting from a couple of places here in Chicago. And I'm like, I just want my own space. But I was so scared. And people were like, well, why would you do that? And other people were like, go for it. And I went for it. It was the best thing I ever did. I was able to, you know, teach on my own terms and I was able to make more money. So and you, you know, have this space there, even though you're only there for um, a, a third of the time, you know, yeah. the month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's, it makes me feel better knowing that like I can walk into my own space. I can, you know, have people be there at any times. Cause I, you know, I'm by appointment only. Um, and so having that space is also pushing me to find reliable and, and good energy type people to rent for me. So I can have that, that sort of space that I'm trying to build mm -hmm. you know, for the business. Perfect. Um, yeah. It's, it's exciting. So I'm not really sure, you know, what, you know, five-year goal is. I'm somebody that I'm starting to learn this business that anything can happen mm -hmm. in, in a good way. Like it's only, you know, getting better and better. So I'm excited for that. And, 
you know, maybe I'll have a few people work with me and then, you know, maybe open up somewhere else in another city and why not? It'll be exciting. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Vanessa, thank you so much for jumping on this call today with us. I think, um, you know, we'll see what people have to say in the comments, but I think uh, definitely a uh, very inspiring story. Uh, if you're watching, uh, do me a favor, thumbs up the video, uh, go ahead and follow Vanessa. I'm going to list all of her uh, information here in the comments. Do subscribe to our channel and um, let us know what you think. Or if you have any questions for Vanessa and myself, just drop them here in the comments. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, thank you again, Vanessa. It's super, super That's inspiring. Awesome. I want to go and make some money now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'm over. I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, do you, would you want to say quickly uh, how, how people can find you on Instagram? And I'll put uh, yes. you below. My, my Instagram handle is Van Gogh Beauty Bar. And then also same thing for Facebook. My Facebook page is that, but I post a lot more on, on Instagram. On Instagram. Insta Instagram yeah. is the place for, anyways, yes. for, for yes. microblading. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to say goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Ciao, ciao.